All right, we're doing a double header, Yume again. This is the plot chart. There aren't many videos of people talking about how to write a plot or what a plot needs. And the ones that do exist, I don't think they're very helpful. So I'm, I'm doing my own plot chart. It actually took me a while because I was trying to figure out what exactly does a plot need. But this is what I came up with. The first is conflict. Absolutely every story needs conflict. There needs to be a problem to solve. If there is no problem to solve, or the, if the conflict is too weak and the characters are not like, it's not moving the characters into action, like the bum and the heroine, then the story is going to be trash because like there's nothing to do. There needs to be conflict in a story. And this example, I got this epic pick of these two. They got conflict. They're in opposition. The conflict does not always need to be external. It can be internal. It can be thematic. It can be philosophical. It, can just, it just needs to be conflict. This is an example of some visual. It's like man versus man, man versus nature, man versus technology, man versus self, stuff like that. Next thing is that it needs logic and causality. The sequence of events makes sense. For example, but therefore so because you know the but, but therefore by the South Park writers, other words could be like so and then because of that this happens. Things just need to make sense. For example, when the Hokage died, Naruto, the Naruto Konoha was like in shambles. They needed to find another Hokage, and then they were, and then in the next arc, they had to send their rookies. Well, not maybe not rookies, but whatever rank they were, they had to send low-level people like Naruto, Shikamaru, and Shino, or not Shino, Kiba. They needed to send them out on missions because they were, they were doing a lot of missions because they they were missing their Hokage. Rising stakes. I used to be against this because of the whole power escalation thing, but then I realized that power escalation is kind of like a necessary evil. But you have, but there are ways to manage it. I have a video on it. But most of the times, the level of the problems and stakes rise as the story goes on. You need to have this because if the story just stays flat, then it's kind of boring. Because you, once they complete this task, you know they can complete this task because it's the same level, and you know they can complete this task. But if the story goes down, once they complete this task. There's no fear that they're going to be able to complete this task, so you're not really invested. But if the story goes up, just because they completed this task does not mean they can complete this task. And that's what I said in my power escalation video as well. But there are ways to get around it, but like increasing the emotional stakes or kind of doing like a puzzle method. I've talked about both of those in another video, but I show Freeze and Cell because that's escalation. First they fight him and then he's stronger than him. So the story kind of needs to rise. And it's not, this isn't just go for him. Uh, battle mode. It doesn't just go for action. It goes for basically any genre. You don't want the stakes to like stay on the same level or to go down. And then finally, the setup and payoff. Ideas that are set up need to be paid off by paid off by the end. And I chose this example because Seraph was set up way early. He was like set up in the first 100 chapters, and then finally he's paid off when he fights Natsu in the final battle. That's a long setup and payoff. And then these are the optional ones. The reason I put these under optional is because I feel like a story can survive without them, but it's still better if it does have them. The first thing is ups and down. The progress or tension doesn't just increase. 3x structure. 3x structure is a great example because the 3x structure kind of goes like that. This is your first stack break. Then your midpoint is like a false defeat. It goes down. And then your second act break, you go back up. And then you reach the climax. And then you reach the resolution. The reason that's so good is because like it goes up and down. It's not like the characters are continuously successful throughout the entire story. It just keeps going up and up or the tension that's progress or the tension. It's not like the tension just keeps increasing. There are moments where it like settles down and then for for progress. Yeah, sometimes they fail. Sometimes they succeed. You don't want them to just, it's just you don't want it to be stagnant. That's the main point. And then moments slash set pieces. I've heard both of them. I, I prefer set pieces because it makes it clear what you're talking about. These are memorable, exciting moments based on the genre. So I show this image. It's it's not necessary. Just this isn't like an action example. Like obviously something epic is going to happen. But for example, if you have a romance show, a set piece might be maybe the two characters kissing. Maybe it's a confession scene. Maybe it's a rejection scene. It's like something that you want to go back to and rewatch. In a mystery, it might be the detective figuring out who the killer is. It might be the killer planting some kind of seed. It might be a red herring. It's just something that's memorable. Because if your story has no memorable moments, then it's not entertaining it, or you're missing out on a big factor of entertainment like who would want to rewatch the show if like yeah the story was good but like there were no memorable moments i have no incentive to actually rewatch it you don't want that response from your audience the next thing is subplots there are smaller stories within the overarching story i showed this example because kirishima had a subplot he had that flashback and all that it was like a mini journey within the story like if you take just kirishima's parts you could have some kind of story of course it would not be complete it would not have like setting and all that other stuff 
but it would still be a satisfying story within itself. You don't need subplots, but like they improve the story. They make it more complex. They make the plot more complex. And then there's poeticism. Things line up perfectly like poetry. This is just the best way I can explain it. I was trying to think of other examples, but then I realized that it's a lot broader than I thought. Because the first first example I thought of is, I, I even mentioned it in another video. I think it was about synthesis, but I'll get there. I said like, if the hero's father got killed by a knife, or got killed by the villain, and the villain killed him with a knife, and then the hero kills the villain with a knife, that would be poeticism, because the things lined up perfectly. But then I realized that synthesis, which I talked about in another video, actually lines up with that. And the reason I showed this is because Akashi had a character arc, and once he completed this character arc, at the very same time, he also got a phys he got a power up, and all of his character, all of his team, he he allowed them to go into the zone, and that is character arc lining up with power up in real life just because you have a character arc just because you learn something you change your beliefs that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to start playing better and vice versa just because you start playing better doesn't mean you're necessarily going to change your beliefs but in stories things can line up perfectly like poetry so when things synthesize that's what i call poeticism and i feel like that increases the quality of the story it's always hype when stories are able to link up things poetically like that then the next example is originality. I know what people are going to say. They're like, oh, didn't you say that originality should not be used as a criticism? Well, read what I say here. The story does not repeat or copy itself. The reason I show Hunter Hunter is because Hunter Hunter, you could, there, there are a lot of things you can say about Hunter Hunter negatively, but the positive thing that I can never take away from Hunter Hunter is that each of his arcs are unique. York New does not feel like Greed Island, which does not feel like Chimera Ant Arc, which does not feel like the Hunter Exam, which does not feel like what's it called the tournament heaven's arena all the the most you could say is that the saving the killer with zoldic arc the zoldic family arc is similar to the 13th chairman arc because is they're both saving a zoldic from their family but like the 13th chairman they have a lot more going on as well and the reason i bring this up is because like stories like one piece and bleach have this issue one piece is not as bad but bleach is like it's pretty bad like it repeats itself a lot and it, it it decreases the quality of the story because why, why are you repeating yourself i would rather see you copy someone else's plot instead of copying yourself and just repeating the same thing and there's another story kingdom does that a lot almost every arc feels the same i enjoy those stories i enjoy kingdom but th the repetitiveness in itself is it, that's a problem that's why i say originality it's just originality in respect to the story itself and the last thing is external internal and philosophical the story should include all stakes i showed this because i made a video about it how this there was a climax where they had all the external internal and philosophical stakes lining up at the same time this is in the climax external relates to the plot internal relates to characters philosophical relates to the theme it's not necessary but it's, it's again it's like a big punch it's like a super move in your stories it's very beneficial there's no downside to including this and yeah this this is what i believe is necessary and optional in a plot and i feel like if you do all of these things you got your plot down i used to say that the story should really have three act structure but i don't think they need it anymore i think as long as you have ups and downs to a degree i forgot three act structure i noticed that a lot of story a lot of story arcs that i feel like are really solid and are good guidelines to go by they have three act structures there's the versus mahito arc which is why i showed this image there's the baratier arc it has three act structure i feel like it's just really paced well there's the land of waves arc all of them because they have three act structure they feel just paced so naturally they just have like this natural movement but you don't need to have that you can you can do something like that but like when you do it like this it's just simple it's nice it's clean it's neat so yeah this is my plot chart that's all i got thank you for watching please like comment share subscribe and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.